dedicate their lives to helping orphaned animals. They open their hearts and homes to all the challenges of raising a young life, no matter how large or small. They are the Wildlife Nannies. Today on Wildlife Nannies, an exciting day for tree kangaroo Dorothy. This little baby meets an eagle, has to meet the challenge of learning what she can eat, and is left alone in the rainforest for the first time. And we spend a day with Nellie, the baby warthog. This five-week-old meets grumpy fellows on her search for her nanny, Heike, throughout the wildlife park. Will she make new friends? It's early morning in Australia. A small paradise for kangaroos was created in the primeval nature of these rainforests. Margaret Cianelli lives in the Australian Tablelands at Lumholt Lodge near Atherton. She opened this bed and breakfast in the middle of the rainforest 30 years ago. Dorothy. Dorothy. Good girl. Did you sleep well? Although she originally trained as an animal carer at the Stuttgart Zoo, Margit is now a renowned gotcha. specialist for Lumholtz kangaroos, the smallest species of all tree kangaroos. She's raised many foundlings and returned them to the wild. Her youngest foundling is Dorothy. Her mother was killed by dingoes when Dorothy was still in her pouch. The starving baby was less than a pound when it was found and brought to market. No, you shouldn't be eating that. You're supposed to climb up there, not eat my orchids. Come on, up you go. Good girl. Now behave. Before it's time to head into the woods with Dorothy for the first time, Margaret makes her little one breakfast. This kangaroo still has to learn what she can and can't eat in the woods, especially since Margaret's had some bad experiences when Dorothy got her own breakfast. Just the other day, she ate a mushroom that she shouldn't have, and she was out of it for the rest of the day. She couldn't even recognize my voice anymore. She was having hallucinations, and she was making jerky head movements. Of course, I got really worried, and I called the vet. It took two whole days before she was normal again. Will Dorothy be able to climb the trees in the bush and find appropriate food? It's also morning at the Kraga Kama Game Park in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. In the forest, the first animals are waking up. Even this small warthog is up and about already. Three-month-old foundling Nelly, being raised by park caretaker Heike Zitzer. Huh? Here's your bottle. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Good girl. I've raised animals for over 12 years now. I've raised all sorts. Swallows, jackals, which we had here. I've even raised other warthogs. I've even raised lion babies. Lots of other animals. So many, I can't remember. But as owner of a safari tour company, Heike can't just take care of Nelly. She also has to run a business. And so, she has to leave Nelly alone to go to work. But even a little warthog has to learn to find its own way in the park. 
Heike was born in South Africa and spent the bigger part of her youth in Germany. When she turned 17, she returned to South Africa and dedicated herself to the animals and the Kragakama game park. She loves the wide open spaces and all the animals that surround her. A favorite attraction for visitors to the park are the rhinos Bulla and his wife Bella. These two are the most famous inhabitants of the park and are used to all these crowds. Heike is leading a safari tour, but for this park manager, that also means inspection time. Nelly finally notices that her adoptive mother is no longer around. Will she find Heike in the huge park? It's breakfast time in Australia. Margaret pays especially close attention so that there will be no big surprises. Every child needs a bit of supervision. 90% of the tree kangaroo's diet consists of leaves. That's why it's especially important that Dorothy learns about the rainforest's great variety and abundance of food sources. But as Margaret already mentioned, Dorothy seems to have her own taste. Don't eat the thorns. Those are like needles. Good grief, I don't know how you manage. It hurts to watch. Approximately 80 to 100 different types of leaves can be eaten by tree kangaroos. And that's a lot for a baby to remember. After her yummy breakfast, things get serious for Dorothy. It's time for her first climbing tour through the rainforest. And in the early morning, the trees are still damp and wet. Nelly is still searching for Heike. Although she knows that she shouldn't disturb her nanny during working hours, why not see if one can't run into her by accident? Finger. Not my finger. Hello, Nelly. Hello, Nelly. Hello, Kiki. Hello, Kiki. That's Nelly. <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? Well, as you can see, she knows her way around. And she did it all on her own up to now. And wasn't scared. That's great. That's what we like to see. Of course, Nelly would love to come for the ride. She knows what the next stop on the safari is. Behind these gates is the cheetah enclosure. These are the fastest predators in the world. Dorothy's facing her biggest challenge so far, climbing. It's only a tree, an inherent part of the kangaroo's world, but natural ease only comes with practice. And this can be a real challenge when the trees are wet. These tree trunks are really slippery when they're wet. The bark is like soap, but it's good for her to hop around and practice here a bit. But instead of climbing, Dorothy would much rather experiment with different food sources. Good girl, good girl. Come on, come on, good girl. Come on, let's go. Let's go home. Come on, Dorothy. Come on. Finally, she also finds the knack for climbing. Good girl. Come, Dorothy, come on. Come. Although still a bit unsure, Dorothy feels courageous with Margaret close by. And the treetops are the home of these rare Lumholtz tree kangaroos. Dorothy's starting to enjoy all this climbing and is already looking for leaves. She still has a lot to learn. She only recognizes a few different types of leaves. 
and can only climb around a little. Maybe she could survive on her own, but I doubt it. She's still much too small. Do you want to run back with me now, so that you know where home is, so that we can find home? Let's find home together. Dorothy doesn't want to leave just yet, but it's enough practice for today. She'll soon have to venture into the forest by herself, and then find her own way back. Nellie is trying to find her nanny again. She should have been back hours ago. Maybe she's waiting for her at home. But there's no one there. Where could she be? Heike is checking up on another foundling, Dima the cheetah, who was hand-raised by her and is totally tame. Several park visitors now get a chance to meet these rare endangered animals up close. Now Dima is just over three years old and he's fully grown but he's not fully mature yet. Do you see this? This is Paul and this is his dew claw. You see, it's quite sharp. This is what he uses to catch his prey with. You can also touch this. He's very much enjoying himself. <laughs> and that's what all cats do. They stretch and they roll around. Of a rudder on a boat, when he changes direction, he's, he's imagine he's um, after prey, running after prey. And you must be taller than him, see? The other cheetah that's in here, Susie, she also grooms him and he grooms her back. Yeah. She's somewhere. She's around somewhere. She keeps away. She, she's not tame. She will... Like normal household cats, cheetahs can purr. But unlike other big cats, they can't roar. You can put your hand there. He won't bite you. Just put your hand there. <laughs> and you must just watch that he doesn't grab onto you. Okay. We know about those three that are out, it's just we can't do very much about it because there's too many cars in the park. Dima is so tame, but, uh, even okay. Nellie would be safe with her. Dorothy is now ready to remain in the rainforest on her own for the first time. It's also high time that she finds the right tree to call her new home. Although the first climbing expedition went very well, Margaret still wants to be safe and protect her foundling as much as possible. So, she has something special in mind. She's meeting falconer Mark to find out about a transmitter he uses for his birds. Maybe this would be a great tracking device for Dorothy. Oh yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. So how do you attach them to the birds? Well, this one would have had uh, maybe just a little leather pouch with... Uh, it, it would have been perhaps wrapped, because I I was using similar in the park I was at, maybe yeah. a little leather pouch like that, a hole at the exactly, front yes. with, the, with the cable tie or yeah. a zip tie through yeah, it, whatever yeah. you call it, so it would have been like that, and then stuck onto a tail feather. How do you mm. stick it to a tail feather? I'll show you. I'll bring an eagle out. Oh, uh, okay. Dorothy, I think you might want to be a bit comfortable now. Dorothy, check it out. Dorothy doesn't really look like she wants to. What's different with mine is that there's a, like a, a, a little loop fixed onto the cap, whereas yours doesn't have a, a, a loop on it. So. Oh, right. Oh, wow. And here's just a little leather thing stuck onto a feather. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. 
it could be that she gets herself up into a tree and can't find down anymore, which is does happen, you know. Um, they, they can get themselves into all sorts of situations. Um, if the yeah. bird has the motivation to move, uh, whether it's got startled by something, threatened by some eagles overhead, or whether I've made a mistake and, and brought the eagle out when it really wasn't in the right frame of mind anyway. It, it, if it's got the motivation to move, it just gives me some backup to go and follow it. But the problem that we've got in this region, we haven't got many roads, it's quite remote here. So even though it's got a radio tracker on it, I never want to have to use it, never ever. Because if, if he goes over these hills, that's right. It's, it's on foot. <laughs> it's hard work. Yeah. So how, how often did you have to do it? I've only, what well, with this guy? No, anyway, how often? Once. Did you... Only once have I had to go and follow an eagle. Yeah. That was awful. Is this Stella? No, this is it's Bill, a new the new one. one. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Bill. He's a lot smaller than Stella. Yeah. And he's, he's of a, a nervous disposition, this boy. Is he? He didn't have a very good introduction to captivity. He's got a, a cataract on one eye, oh. and he was moved around quite a bit for the first few months. His, his only experience was a new cage, a fortnight later, chased around, pinned on the ground, chucked into a box, somewhere oh. new. Will Bill and Dorothy become friends? Mm -hmm. I, I just wouldn't want to see it happen with mine. No. Imagine the, the bad press I'd get if, if someone saw my eagle coming into a tree okay. kangaroo. Whoa. The joke seems lost on Margaret and Dorothy. They just want to get going Bye, now. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. I hope you have a good time. Back at home, the fright of meeting the eagle is quickly forgotten. But one thing is for sure. So that Dorothy can't get lost, Margaret will attach the transmitter to her neck. Dorothy's not so sure what yes. to make of her new necklace. Let's just hope it does the trick. Yes? We're set. We're going to take a nice walk. We'll put her somewhere. And then we're going to leave her there. Now comes the biggest challenge of Dorothy's life. Will she find her way home again? Nellie's nanny is still nowhere to be found. Hika's safari tour is going well. After the cheetahs, there's time with the antelopes. Then on to the little warthog Come on. again. Come on. Come on. Come on. Heike can't leave her baby standing there waiting, of course. And Nellie knows where she can get her cuddles. Come on, Nellie. Come on, Nellie. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on, Gilly. Now what? Of course, Heike can't let Nellie hog the spotlight for much Bye, longer. Nelly. Her guests are waiting to see the lions next. Nellie's so used to Heike that she's so far never had contact with another warthog. This one's probably appearing sooner than she'd like. But there seems to be some interest, and Nellie greets her own kind bravely. But still, he seems a little strange to her. Meanwhile, Heike has finally returned home. But where's Nellie now? Nellie, Nellie. Nellie, Nellie. Come on, girl. The rainforest challenge is on.
Margate's picking a good climbing tree for her foundling, one that's not too steep or too slippery. Dorothy doesn't look too convinced. The transmitter is also working. It's time for Dorothy to prove how independent she really is. Dorothy's really busy with climbing. We now know where she is. We have contact with her position. So let's go back to the house and wait for her. And we'll see if she can find her way home by tonight. If she doesn't, well, then we still have our wonderful backup plan, which is the transmitter to find her again. Dorothy seems to be doing well, but will she find her way back home through the thick rainforest? Heike is getting worried at Kragakama Game Park. But why hang out with your nanny when you've just made a new friend? Come on, Piggy! Did you see Nelly? It could be that she's just roaming a little. Maybe she's trying to find other warthogs. I'll try again. Nelly! Nelly, Nelly! Maybe I'll have better luck over there. Maybe she went back there. Nelly! Come on, Gilly! Where are you? Come on, Nelly! Come on, Nelly! But in the end, it would be nice to find one's mommy especially when she praises her family. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Animals don't have preconceived notions. They trust you and always love you for who you are. And just like you are there for them, they're there for you. Nelly found Heike and also made a new friend. She'll grow into a big independent warthog soon, thanks to Heike's loving care. Margaret's worried. It's dusk already and Dorothy hasn't turned up. She finally decides to use the transmitter. It's almost dark. And there's absolutely no trace of her. I'll feel better if we at least sort of know where she is. I just hope that she comes down, because at night, there are a lot of different animals on the prowl. Animals that Dorothy simply doesn't know. Now, Mark's transmitter is coming in handy. Yeah. She's not too far away. She's not all the way at the top. So she's at a height where we could talk her down. Dorothy! 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 There you are. It's almost night time, Dorothy. That tree is much too big for you. You can't get down from there. You have to go back over there. Good girl. 
Slowly, the little kangaroo now comes down, glad that she's found her nanny once again. Even though this was quite an experience, Heike and Dorothy can consider this first venture into the forest a success. Now these two can spend a quiet evening at home, satisfied in the knowledge that with a little practice, Dorothy will soon find her way in the Australian wilderness. Next time on Wildlife Nannies, chaos at the Queensland Wildlife Hospital. The wildlife warrior nannies have to handle a kookaburra that gets loose.